Here's my biggest advice to you. Don't trade like everyone else. The real profits in trading come from being one step ahead, anticipating the next move before it happens, and not by reacting using lagging indicators. 90% of trading education is useless in today's market, and that's the reality. So let me share my discoveries and my process to seize opportunities before others do. Money is made in trading by anticipating what is coming and not by waiting till it happens and going with the crowd. In trading, being ahead of the curve is the name of the game. It's about anticipating the market's moves, not just reacting to them once they happened. Why? Because by the time the rest of the crowd catches up, it's often too late to make the most of the situation. If you anticipate the market's next wave in advance, you can ride it profitably. But if you just stand there and let it hit you, you will find yourself knocked over. Consider a breakout in the market, where prices suddenly move outside a defined range. This could be the start of a new trend or a market manipulation practice. If you've done your analysis and predicted the breakout, you can buy early and potentially profit as the trend takes off. But if you're just going along with the crowd, using lagging and outdated tools, you'll often end up buying too late, after the breakout has already happened and the price has shoot up. A similar principle applies to pullbacks, short-term reversals in an uptrend or downtrends. If you've done your homework and expect a pullback, you can plan your trades to take advantage of this temporary dip, buying at a discount or selling at a premium. The key to making money in trading is anticipation, not just blindly following some delayed signals like most of the crowd. So let me repeat, trading is about anticipating the market's next move, not reacting to what's already happened. It's a proactive, not a reactive approach. If your trading strategy is 100% reactive, you have a big problem. Big moves start from flat markets, not from active ones. When the market is going nowhere, pay close attention and wait for a strong move that is certain to eventually happen. As I said before, the essence of trading is anticipation. Successful trading involves predicting the future direction of the market based on its current conditions. And a common mistake is to dismiss a dull market as unprofitable and ignore it. Big moves in the market often originate from these periods and not from times of high activity. During these seemingly uneventful periods, the market is setting the stage for significant moves. So when you feel the market is stagnant or flat, don't let your guard down. Instead, sharpen your focus and wait for the eventual substantial move that could follow. These are the accumulation and distribution periods during which smart money are planning their next moves. During these periods, you have the chance to position yourself for the wave that's about to come. Successful trading relies on certain conditions, and the most important factor is the market volatility, the extent of price swings. Every day, prices fluctuate constantly, rising and falling in response to various factors. As a trader, your goal is to profit from these price changes. But when the market is quiet and prices aren't moving much, there's not much opportunity to make money. I'm not talking about ranges or accumulation or distribution periods. I'm talking about the distance price travels during a day. Trading during quiet and low volatility periods is a common mistake. If the price of a market is barely moving, there's little chance to make a profit. Let's say it costs you $5 to trade. This represents the commissions or fees you need to pay for each trade you make. If the stock you trade only moves around $5 to $10, you'll need to catch almost every single swing perfectly just to break even. If you factor in the occasional loss, it becomes clear why trading in a quiet market can be a losing game. The solution is to look for markets with sufficient volatility 
ones where prices are moving enough to offer potential for profit. Use the average true range or the average daily range to determine the best markets to be in. With these tools, you ensure that the markets you're trading have enough room to move. Trading is like playing a video game where each level brings new scenarios and challenges. And here's the catch. No two scenarios in this game ever repeat exactly. Every new scene or challenge is different from the last. Financial markets are the same. Each day in the market is a new day with different situations and it's impossible to find two situations that are 100% identical. The market is always changing, evolving with new subtleties and nuances. Now, imagine you try to use the same strategy for every level in your game. It's not going to work. Same goes for trading. If you create a simple set of rules on EURUSD, it might not work on other markets. It's so obvious, but many traders don't realize this. They take a strategy designed for certain market conditions and apply it in a different environment. Most likely, it won't work. If you're a new trader, instead of rushing into the game, you need to prioritize observation. If you focus on building a strategy before observing the market behavior, you're doing it wrong. You need to base your edge on careful observation and understanding of market patterns and behaviors. This is very important. If your trading strategy isn't rooted in your observations and understanding, you'll lack the confidence to stick to your plan, especially when the market gets rough. Trading requires a unique approach tailored to your observations and understanding. My advice, spend a full week observing price action and don't take any trades. Just open a chart and look at the action in real time. Reflect on the market patterns and behaviors that caught your attention. How does the market behave before an uptrend or a downtrend? What's the most reliable market behavior you've observed? These are high-quality observations that are key to identifying your unique edge. They will guide you in creating a good strategy that aligns with the market's rhythm. Wyckoff, the famous trader, was a firm believer in taking free positions. And this is something I've added in my trading plan. Taking a free position is a strategic method to safeguard and secure your gains. It's simple. Let's say you place a trade and it's going in your favor. To protect your profits, you move your stop loss following the price. This way, even if the price suddenly drops, you won't lose any money. It's like setting a safety net that moves up with the price. Doing this helps you squeeze out every bit of profit from the trade. And the great thing is, as long as you don't decide to close the trade yourself, there's always a chance for more profit. If you get frustrated when you close a trade for a profit and you see the price going even higher, this is the answer. Instead of setting a fixed target and calling it a day once the price hits that, you follow the trade and adjust the stop loss according to the price swings, going for the maximum possible profit each time. Consistently adjusting your stop loss following the market's rise or fall leaves room for additional profit, whereas prematurely closing your trade seals off any such potential opportunities. Too many traders spend excessive time constantly tweaking their setups, playing around with their charts, and making unnecessary changes every other day. This practice isn't just time-consuming, but can also destroy your trading strategy. Imagine you've identified your edge, your unique understanding of market behavior that gives you an advantage. Your next step is to set your charts in a way that allows you to trade according to your plan. But here's the catch. Make a commitment to yourself to resist making any changes to it for at least a month. If you're constantly changing your charts and setups, you won't be able to distinguish what strategies are successful 
and which ones you should avoid. Consistency, in essence, is the closest thing to a holy grail in trading. Make a decision and have the discipline to stick to it. If your trading strategy varies every day, how can you possibly evaluate what's working and what's not? It's ironic that many traders demand consistency from the market but fail to apply the same principle to their trading plan. Jesse Livermore, the famous trader, said that a consistent trader needs to master four skills – observation, experience, memory, and mathematics. You need good observation skills to monitor the market, to track changes and trends. Then you need to understand each move and try to predict the next one. Experience comes with time. It's not just about winning or losing trades, but understanding what worked and what didn't. You get better as you understand the market mechanics better. Memory is your personal database. It involves remembering past trades, market patterns, and changes. Mathematics is the analytical part. It involves crunching numbers, analyzing charts, and predicting market trends. These four skills work together and will allow you to evaluate the market conditions accurately. Missing any of these elements will leave you ineffective and likely unsuccessful. That's the reality. Should you trade with a system, a set of objectively defined rules, or with discretion, meaning using your judgment? Trading can seem like a binary choice between following a system, a set of objective rules, or relying on discretion, leveraging your judgment. I try to use both approaches. I'm what they call a hybrid trader. You can have a set of rules in place, your trading guidelines, without them being 100% objective. There is room for rules as well as judgment. However, if you're new to trading, your approach should lean more towards systematic trading. Systematic trading is more beneficial for a beginner because trading with objective rules creates a uniform trading system, thus promoting a coherent approach to the markets. When trading using discretion, the chances of committing mistakes are significantly higher, particularly as a beginner. So if you're just starting, it's better to be wholly systematic. As you gain more experience and a deeper understanding of the market dynamics, you can begin to incorporate elements of discretionary judgment into your trading strategy. It's all about finding the balance that suits your style and risk tolerance. The art of trading is similar to mastering a new skill or sport. Just as a beginner doesn't start playing a sport in the major leagues, a new trader doesn't start by investing huge sums of money right off the bat. It's a common mistake new traders make. The safest and most effective way to learn is to start slow and small, and then gradually work your way up as your confidence and competence grow. If you've done your homework and absorbed all the information that you could find about trading, the techniques, strategies, tips and tricks, then it's time to apply that knowledge. But it's best to start trading in small quantities, with a few shares or mini lots. This allows you to gain real trading experience without risking a significant amount of your capital. Now, this approach may not seem exciting to some, especially those who love the thrill of gambling and want to make a big splash right away. But the goal here is not to gamble. It's not about making a lot of money quickly. It's about learning to make money consistently over the long term. So start small, gain experience, and gradually increase the size of your trades as you become more skilled and confident. So the market you trade today is not the market you traded yesterday and is not the market you will trade tomorrow. That's because the market participants change, as do their trading strategies. So if you're expecting a continued winning streak, brace yourself for disappointment. The market doesn't work that way. Even if you find an edge, 
that edge could and in fact will disappear over time. In my trading journey, I found several edges, all of which eventually faded. You need to understand this. You cannot just come up with a profitable system and then use it for the next 20 years to become insanely rich. If your method has any edge, that edge will change and decrease over time. That's what is meant when it is said that there is no holy grail in trading. I'm not trying to discourage you. The point is, in order to succeed, you must keep your trading strategies in sync with the evolving markets. If your successful strategy starts to lose its power, you must re-engineer it and adjust it to new conditions. What's my personal edge? It involves supply and demand and volume spread analysis concepts. If you want to know more about it, check out this trading course where I explain in detail exactly how I trade. And check out our academy program if you want to further level up your trading. Until next time.